Let's all get a hymn book set. Turn to page number 248 as we stand and sing the first, second, and last verse of Now I Belong to Jesus. Page number 248. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life, so ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Thank you, and you may be seated. <clears throat> Does anybody have any prayer requests that the preacher didn't get tonight before we get started praying? Yes, ma'am, Miss Angie. Okay. Oop, that ain't right. Anybody else? Yes, Caleb has a test in his body. Caleb, okay. Anybody else before we pray? All right, I think Brother Essence is going to get us started. Y'all pray along with us tonight. All right, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for many blessings, God. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your own son Jesus down the cross for our sins, Lord. We thank you so much for that. Lord, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity to just be able to gather in your house, Lord, just to be able to worship you freely this morning, this evening, Lord. And Lord, we ask you just to please... Um, uh, be with us as we uh, pray over our prayer list and all the needs are on the list that we have lifted tonight as well, Lord. Pray you just answer each one according to your precious and holy will. Lord, I ask you to please be with Frank Rinka, Lord, and UVA, Charles Anderson, and Silva, John Corn, uh, Landon, Oaks, and Fran, Deborah Jones, Joyce Abbott, April Le uh, League, uh, the Bowen family, John Hart, Jackie Francisco, Carol uh, Lewis, <coughs> Logan and uh, was the back, Lord. We ask you to please go to Caleb Warren in his upcoming test, God. We ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, just to touch each one of those and bless them according to your precious and holy will. We ask you to please be with our pastor, Lord. Pray that you just touch him, Lord. Continue to be with his health, Lord. And we ask you to just continue to be with him as he uh, uh, leads the church, Lord. Pray you just bless him and give him uh, the vision that we need for Timberlake, Lord. I ask you to please be with him and his wife and his family, God. And just answer all their needs according to your precious and holy will. We ask you to please be with our church attendance. We ask you just to please allow people to keep coming back in your house, Lord. And we pray that we see soul saving lives change this year, Lord. We pray that you just uh, uh, be our focus in everything that we do going forth throughout this whole year. Lord, we ask you to please be with our tithing and giving, Lord. Help 
us just to give back what you so graciously given to us, Lord, and just help us to give from the heart, Lord, and we know that you can do great and mighty things through it all. Lord, I ask you to please be with the deacons and trustees, where you just be with them and bless them and their families as well. Lord, I ask you to please be with the new building, Lord, pray to sell this property, Lord, pray somebody uh, comes right now as we're, as we're, before we even get finished praying tonight, Lord, I pray that somebody comes and buys this building, Lord, I pray that you just uh, help us get on that new land soon, Lord. Lord, I ask you to please be with the boiler construction plans, Lord. Pray, be, please be with Mike Maracas and the architect. Pray in Jesus' name, just allow everything to go smoothly there, Lord. Lord, I ask you to please be with the uh, Ministry of Eternal Broadcasting, WTBI Broadcasting, Lord. Pray that you just touch um, many souls, Lord, and we see, pray that we see souls saved and lives changed because of it. Lord, continue to be with Believers Bible Institute, Lord. Pray you just be with all the students and teachers, Lord. Help each and every single one of them just to grow in you. And we ask you to please be with our Sunday school and teachers. Pray that every class quadruple in size this year. And you just bless all the teachers and give them souls for their labor. Lord, please be with our youth ministry, Lord. Pray you just uh, send as many kids, Lord, uh, so that we can raise them up uh, in your nurture and ammunition, Lord. We ask you to please be with uh, children's churches as well. Bless that ministry, Lord. And just help it to continue to grow. Lord, I ask you to please be with Tuesday Bible study, Lord. Pray you bless that ministry as well. <clears throat> Lord, I ask you to please be with the peace of Israel. Lord, we pray that you please be with our president, nation, and economy, Lord. Uh, I ask you to please be with our conflicts in Ukraine, Iraq, uh, Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. Lord, I ask you just to please just have your willing way and be with our soldiers and bless them in a mighty way. Lord, please be with our visitors and new converts. Lord, continue to let them come back and just grow in your word, Lord. Lord, as we come to the need of salvation tonight, Lord, it's the most important need of all, Lord. We pray that you just send the right person with the gospel on their lips, ready to give to these people, Lord. And I pray that you, they humbly accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I ask you to please be with Nick, Nick Albano, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers, Lord. Also be with his health, Brandon and Parents, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy Connor, uh, Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Bobby Dalton has cancer, Clint Davis, Terry Deer has cancer as well, Robert Deer, Lester Dawson, Michelle Doss, Joe Dudden, Tom Hardy, Jesse Corbett, Brandon Gossie, Horsley Family, Jimmy Jones, Billy King, uh, Mike King, Stephen King, uh, Ryan and Ty Tyler Kinder, uh, my dad, Sean McCall, Chase Minter, Haley Minter, Darren Moore, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark Reagan, Brian Reagan, Caitlin Sanchez, Victor Sanchez, Mark Sharan, Timothy Sharan, uh, Dylan Smith, Sean Stout, Bobby Stout, Cindy Thompson, Kimberly, Madeline, Megan, and Melvin Thompson, uh, Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Claude Royal, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. Lord, we pray that you just save their souls in Jesus' name. Then before we just ask you to please be with the people to get back in church. We we'll ask you to please with the Clary family, Buddy and Carol Golden, Cassie and family, DJ and Chelsea, um, Gary Graham, Kristen McBride, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, and Daryl Fam Tickle and family. Lord, pray that you just convert your hearts and get them back underneath your precious and holy will. Lord, I ask you to please be with the health needs of Sarah Bryant as a flu, Jamie Cole, Kenny and Ears, Earl Connor, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, Lauren Cletus Evans, Faith Ann Holly, Audrey Hawkins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Beverly King, uh, Angeline Miriam, Shelby Martin, Gary and Kathy McCullen, Betty Mitchell, and Blood Clots, uh, Toby Moore, Linda Morfield, Stan and Shannon Morfield, Diane Mills, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols as asthma, Loretta Nichols recovering from surgery, David and Patty Murray, Angie and Billy Oates, Vincent Sherry Biota, Alan Shell Porobinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Ricky Reed, Cindy Rutherford, Gary Salmon, on his foot, Nan and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Carol Tickle, Ricky Toller, Angel Underwood, Anita Warwick, Edmonton Wallington, Leanne County Wiles. I ask you to please be with Lewis Witt, Mary Sue Woodson, Harold Yancey, and Amy Young. Lord, I ask you to please touch those health needs, Lord, and just answer each one according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord, and we just ask you to please be with the remainder of this prayer. Let's for us in Jesus' name we pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we continue our prayer list tonight, we want to pray for those that have diabetes round about us. We pray you touch each one, Father. Help us keep their blood sugars under control, Father. Be with Amanda and Ryan Allen, Sherry Bray, Logan Saroma, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod and Lee Range, Danny Wark, and Wendy Yancey. We also want to pray for those round about us with COPD. Be with Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. And Father, we pray that tonight you'll touch, especially touch those in the nursing homes tonight, Father. Be real to them there in the room. Let them feel your presence, Father. Be with Dale Leffler in Ohio at Roman Eagle. Be with
Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Francis Robertson, George Thomas, and Dinah Wagner. At Chatham Rehab, be with Vidal Crane and Michelle Johnson. And at Liberty, be with Kyle Baldwin. Also be with those with Alzheimer's and dementia. We especially lift up Mary Malone to you tonight. Also, Father, we have many friends, family, and neighbors that need a touch from you tonight, Father. We just pray you'll touch them in the hour of need, Father. Be with Austin and Vinnie Begley, Carol Bonet, uh, Phyllis Clary, Andy Cleary, Raymond Cleary, Gene Connor, Mark Francisco on his back, Amy Ferguson, Barbara Hines, Toby Hines, Mary Heiss, Nick Madigan in his heart, Chelsea and Danny Martin, Keith Moorfield, Donald Owen, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Charlie Robertson, Vicki Schelling, who has cancer, Shirley Shire, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, and Alan and Shirley Taylor, the Vickers family, Garland and Preston Watson, and Jim White. And Father, we especially want you to touch those roundabouts with cancer. Father, remove this disease from these bodies. Father, we pray, Father, you'll heal them in Jesus' name. Be with Joni Atkins and Portia Atkins, Kathy Allen, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchett, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Carolyn, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Brenda Davis, Melody Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kellen Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Marie Folis, and Tammy Fries, Amanda Gladder, April Golden, Brenda Gregory, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Anika Hodnett, James Holt, Kevin Hopkins, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Emerson Keats, uh, Linda Mahanos, Joseph Miller, uh, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Tony Phillips, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Robertson, Patricia Robinson, Linda White, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkinson, and Dave Wilkinson. Through uh, the special request made known to us tonight, Father, pray your granny sworn according to your will. Be with these requests of Donna Amos, Chris Adkins, Penny Bailey, Jenny Barrett, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Tanya Curry, Dale Cleary, Donald Francis, Manny Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean and Teresa Horbett, Janice Hodges, Katie and Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Eston Lewis, Shelby Martin, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Daisy and Nick Fitzpatrick, Betty Price, Bonnie Raines, Skylar Rigney, Amy Saunders, Susan Simmons, Bob Tamson, Mike and Eileen Tickle, uh, Hannah Vipperman, Landon Walker, Matthew and Chi Williams, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, and Rowland and Betty Yates. Father, we pray your grantees request according to your will, Father, that everything said tonight be, will be to your honor and your glory for we ask these things in your name. Our Father in heaven, as we continue to pray, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you be with Alan Codwell, that you just be with him, watch over him, Lord, that everything go well as far as surgery. Pray for Shelby Morton, his, her brother, Lord, just be with him, watch over him, Lord. I pray for all the college students, Lord, I just continue that you just protect them, watch over them, and just continue to let them be a light to all those they come in contact with. Tyler Arden, Becca Clarity, Alyssa, Bradley Godsey, Carlton Hoskins, Trinity Langley, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Nasilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, Jason Yancey, Lord. Father in heaven, help us keep focus on 2023 to be a light to this nation, I mean, this city, Lord, and everywhere around us, Lord. I pray for the play that's coming up this week, uh, for souls to be saved and lives to be changed. Pray for Earl Clarkson and Dr. Cloud, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name they bring the message we bring people to, so that they can hear the gospel, Lord, for souls to be saved and lives to be changed, and Larry Johnson, homecoming, Lord. Father, I pray for all our missionaries. Just continue to be with them, Lord. Use them in a mighty way. Tamara Aldridge, Virginia Assembly of Independent Baptists, Randy Ashcraft, Beacon Baptist Missions, Commander Al, Emmanuel Bala, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Mike and Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Cullors, Joseph Delt, Krista Giacomo, Fortino, Trotez, Faye Dykes, David Gibbs, Virgil Galen, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hendez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor Labugan, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Log, Sergio Mahanos, Toronto Rescue Mission, Nathan Miller, National Pastor of Cuba, National Pastor of Pakistan, Dr. John Linda Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Reed, Vangelis Jeff Boyd, David Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, Rolloff Ministry, Chase Serbal, Tabernacle Children's Home, 
Hal Williams and David Weiss. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Jesus be with each and every last one of them. <clears throat> Let us remember the pastors and evangelists that we're able to support. We have Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, also Bobby Brooks and Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman and Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Chris Esterline, Larry Fitzgerald, Joy Flanagan, Joy Foley, also Donnie Glass and Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Hawley, Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson, John Kinsey, Derek and Tim Kaiser, also Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Joel Logan, Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan and Tim Schelling, Davy Shelton, Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, the Tobert family, Brian Warren, and Jeff Woods. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity you blessed us with. We pray for each one that made their way out, Lord. When they leave, they can say it was good to be in your house. We pray now, Lord, for our evangelists and pastors that we're able to support. And God, we pray that that number will increase, Lord, as you, as you bless our church. We pray, Lord, that you'll supply the needs of each evangelist and pastor, Lord, and that they'll continue to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we love you and thank you for all you do for us. We pray you'd continue to keep your hand upon our church, keep us safe, and give us, Lord, many more people to join and, and be a member of this church, Lord, and may you get the praise on and glory for everything that's said and done. We love you and thank you for loving us. For it's in Christ's holy and precious name that I do humbly pray. Amen. Hello. This is from Van State of Missions. Uh, Shelly and I celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary, and I celebrated the 50th anniversary of my salvation. God has been so good. Our children and grandchildren are as well. Um, speaking in a church that was founded as an outreach to the tra trash dump people, people who live in the public dumps and scavenge for food, many have come to know Christ and are faithfully serving in the church we call the Trash Dump Church, which is cool. Like I said, I mean, you really did all that stuff, but souls are being saved, lives are being changed. International travel. After almost three years of travel restrictions due to COVID, I was recently able to travel to South Korea and the, north, the border of North Korea and Mongolia. It was wonderful seeing old friends and reckon, rekindling ongoing partnerships with these frontline missionaries. I am pleased to announce that during the COVID epidemic, most of our faithful partners actually grew in outreach and planning new churches. Do you know what the second largest unreached people in a group are? I didn't realize this until Teresa pointed it out too. So there are 200 million people in Japan alone that are unreached. We hope to establish two exciting partnerships with ingenious ministries in this vastly unreached country. Now China. China continues to drive the underground church even further underground which we know that, and those are really pushing hard on that stuff. Yet the church and me in persecution continues to grow. I am convinced it grows not in spite of persecution, but because of it. Despite these overwhelming restrictions, A.N.M. continues to deliver thousands of Bibles to China, one of the most effective evangelist tools in the Chinese children's storybooks, which is cool. I didn't realize that either, but they do children's books, and it's actually being more effective as far as salvation pointing entire families to the Savior. Please pray for the underground church in China. And there's a lady who went to jail in Mongolia, a woman who was a Christian in Mongolia and wrongfully accused. She was in prison, and during her time in prison, she led more than 150 women prisoners to the Lord and mentored them. She is now an English teacher in Mongolia, which that's pretty cool. Uh, Mongolia experienced strict COVID lockdowns of business, homes, and churches. Because the churches and homes were limited to maximum of gatherings of five people, churches adopted the house church pa uh, pattern for worship. Families started inviting neighbors to Bible studies, and because of the emphasis on relationships, almost all the house churches grew and became stronger. Which through all that, even they still grew. North Korea, AMM, has continued to serve North Korea's partnerships with sources such as tons of food, products, and medicine, but most importantly to send Bibles as good God opened new doors of limited access 
The Kim regime continues to persecute its own people, especially Christians. Please pray for your North Korean brothers and sisters. In Taiwan, the faithful and fruitful ministry is actively reaching out in sharing the love of Christ and the word of God and these migrant workers. Yes, persecution, wars, pandemic, starvation, increasing government restrictions overwhelm our partners in East Asia, but the church continues to grow and go. You have a major role in this global gospel explosion. Thank you for praying and giving. Now more than ever, God is honoring our partnership. The unreached are being reached, and the untold masses are being told the good news. Shelly and I thank you for being a big part of our lives and a big part of what God is doing in East Asia. To all here, Dan and Shelly, she, Shelly Ritchie. All right, thank you, Sean. Take your hymn books and turn to 329. See if you can stand up. Y'all ain't moving too well. Now you got to smile. If you have a hard time with that, look at Lurch. <laughs> Some of y'all having a hard time. He said, man, I can like you here. Okay. 329, Take Time to Be Holy. We'll sing all four verses of Take Time to Be Holy. 329. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word, make friends of God's children. We started last week in verse 8. We talked about the uttermost. 
They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid of thy tokens. Talking about those who've already died and gone to hell. They understand that God said what he meant and meant what he said. Then we looked at the next part of verse 8. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening to rejoice. We talked about the word makest and how that uh, God is the one through us who accomplishes what he does. If we don't do it with God, it doesn't get done at all. If you're trying to do it without God, nothing's going to happen. We'll have a lot of noise, but very little product. And the judgment seat of Christ is coming. And you're going to, going to answer to God for how much fruit you produced and how much fruit you didn't produce. The judgment seat of Christ is not about sin. It's about service. And if you serve with wrong motives and had no fruit, you can't blame the preacher. You can't blame the Sunday school teacher. You can't blame your spouse. You can only blame yourself. Because God is the one who makes it happen. Say amen. amen. Now, tonight we're going to talk about the word visitest. It says in verse 9, Thou, talking about God, visitest the earth. Now, the Hebrew word pakad means to visit with friendly or hostile intent. When God comes in our presence, it's for one of two reasons. It's either friendly or it's hostile. And we're the ones who determine whether it's friendly or whether it's hostile. When we were kids, there was four of us. We were all three years apart, but the last one, there's a year between Barry and Crystal. And sometimes uh, we could determine how the day went by how we acted. If we upset Mama, she upset us. If we pleased Mama, she pleased us. And it's the same way in your spiritual walk with God. You're either making him happy or you're upsetting him. And so uh, there's no doubt that God is the creator of all things. We don't doubt that. Say amen. amen. God created all things. He is the creator. And if he created it, I guarantee you, he can control it. So why do we worry about all these things? Sunday in Sunday school, I, I had a part of my message on the story of the Church of Philadelphia where uh, God told Philadelphia, I know thy works, and thou hast been found faithful. And I was telling somebody who missed Sunday school, shame on them, how that uh, they needed to hear that, go home and listen to it. And to my surprise, they did. And they called me yesterday morning and said, Preacher, we got it. We heard what you said in the message. And I thought, let me see if they got it or not. What did they hear? We're to work and let him worry. We're not to worry and let him work. No, we go ahead and work and let him do the worrying. We'll do that. We'll accomplish things. Why? Because that's his job. He can control things we cannot control. He can control the environment. He can control the demonic world. He can control Satan. And he can control me and you if we'll allow him to. Say amen. Now, either God comes with his help or God comes with his judgment. And we determine which one he uses by how we live our lives every day. Do you live in faith of the word of God or do you live in doubt? Now, let me, let me make something real clear to you. Y'all think I just harp on the Bible because I want y'all to be Bible thumpers. Amen. That's exactly what I mean. I want you to be Bible thumpers. Why? Because that's where everything's at. That is the precious words of God. But you know Christians go days, weeks, and sometimes even months, and the only time they hear the word of God is within the walls of this room. That doesn't please God at all. And it doesn't help you one iota. You know, some Christians have been saved for years. And if their knowledge of the Bible was dynamite, did you hear me? If their knowledge of the Bible was dynamite, and if you study the Bible, the word dynamis is in the Greek text, in the New Testament, and that it's used in the connection to the Word of God. Dynamite is used to move things. Dynamite is used to change things. They can take dynamite now and change the direction of a river. A lot of things you can do with dynamite. There's a lot of things you can do with the Word of God if you use it. 
every time my grandmother used to have these called TSAs. I'm sure some of your grandparents have had them. And when she used to have them, they gave us little sticks of nitroglycerin, dynamite. And you put that dynamite, listen to me now, under her tongue, and she'd just calm down. She, she wouldn't have a seizure anymore. She wouldn't have the TSA. She'd just calm, put that little stick of dynamite under her tongue, and it changed everything about it, calmed her down, stopped the TSA from happening. And I want to tell you something. You'd be surprised if you put a little more of the Word of God in your life, what a change it'd make in you, how it better it'd make you, how much better off you'd be, how much calmer you'd be. I'm preaching good. I don't hear amen. That's good preaching. That's just the fact here. And so when God visits, he wants to help. But sometimes we won't let him help us, and that's our fault. That's our fault. Let me tell you something. My mama, bless her, pea picking heart, she had four children, and my daddy was a truck driver. Now, does that tell you anything? She was there a whole lot of time by herself with four chaps, and three of them was mean as a devil. <laughs> I'm not, y'all not preaching, I am, so just be quiet out there. <laughs> but she had a time taking care of four kids all the time. And Ruby would call, and she'd say, I, We're not going to work Friday and Saturday this week. We'll be down Friday, because. If you worked third shift Thursday night was your last night. And she'd go to the North Main Beauty Parlor and she'd get that whoop to do. Y'all remember them? Get that thing teased up way up on top of her head and then she'd get in the car and her and Tom would hit the road to Lynchburg. And my mama was so glad to see Ruby she didn't know what to do. Why? Because Ruby gave her some needed what? Relief. She cooked some, she cleaned some, she washed the kids some. She was help to my mama with four kids. Now, folks, listen. God knows we got a lot on our plate, and he wants to help us. Don't be stubborn and not let God help you. Say amen. amen. we got to let him be our help, not our judgment. we got to listen to him and live our lives without doubt. That's the biggest destroyer we have as a Christian is because the pressures that are going on around us, we begin to doubt God's not watching. God doesn't care. God did this. Let me tell you, bad, God doesn't do bad things. The devil does bad things. You hear me? If you want to blame somebody for the bad things going on in this world, you don't blame God. You blame the devil. He's the cause of what goes on bad. Listen, doubt is destructive. Faith is constructive. When you believe God at his word, there's that word again. When you know his word, you can believe his word. Listen to me. If you don't study his word, what do you know to believe? And I, I love you, but everybody in this room is a human. If you're not, please leave. <laughs> no one but humans in here, okay? We're all humans in here. And all of us are forgetful. We forget stuff. Stuff flies out of our brain. I had Shelby come in the office yesterday. Preacher, what's this? I don't know. Is it any good? I don't know. I looked at it. It had been scribbled on, marked on. I didn't know where it was. I said, well, I threw it in the garbage can. So I don't come in tonight and says, where's my stuff? I said, what stuff are you talking about, Sean? I left some stuff over here. I said, son, you have luck. That's in 513. I should have looked at it and knew it was Sean's, but hey, he flies over your head sometimes. So I told Sean, I said, no, don't worry about it, Sean. It's okay. It's in my garbage can. Just go in my office and put it at the garbage can, wipe it off. It'll be fine. Sean comes back and says, ain't nothing in that garbage can. I said, whoops, that has been by. <laughs> Don't leave nothing sitting there with Shelby, Shelby and Deborah's at. Because if you do, it's going to be in 513. It's going to be gone. I, I just forgot. I didn't pay any attention. Look, things go over our head. We forget things because we're human. We have to be reminded. Sean has got to be reminded. 
don't leave your junk where it ain't supposed to be. Showtime, sure say amen, young lady. Tell him, amen. Don't leave junk where it ain't supposed to be. Put it up, take care of it. But we're forgetful. He walked off and he left it sitting somewhere it shouldn't have been. We're all forgetful. We're all, because we're humans. That's why God said, read my word. Memorize my word. Remember my word. Trust my word. We've got to keep it in us. So when he visits us, it's for a good reason, not a bad reason. We determine how God's visits are when, we, when, we, when he comes to us and how it will pan out for us. It's much better for him to care for us than to have to chastise us. I'd rather him care for me. How about you? But I'm the one that determines that. You're the one that determines that. If when he visits by the Holy Spirit of God, is he there trying to correct you, taking all the time to get you in line, or are you already ahead of game correcting and believing before he gets there so you can just take off and do something for God? Some people are running in the backwards scene. They're running backwards instead of running forwards because there's always chastisement and there's never any time for God to care for us because he's too busy trying to get our attention where it ought to be, get our actions like they should be because we're not reading the Bible enough to have faith to know what to do. But God gave us his word to help us and again we determine what course he takes. Look at Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 28. And it came to pass that like as I watched over who? Them. To pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. He says, sometimes I have to break down. Sometimes I have to pluck up. But he says, man, I like to build. I like to plant. I'm the Lord. I want to help you build something up. I want to help you do something great with your life. I'm going to tell you something, 58 years has gone by me in a flash. In a F-L-A-S-H, a flash. And I, 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 I mean, you stop and think 58, if I live 20 more years, I'm going to be blessed and lucky. Say <laughs> amen, amen. And most of y'all my age in here, you know what I'm talking about. If we live 20 more years, we're going to be blessed and lucky by God, trust, blessed by God. So we better start thinking, what have we got accomplished? What do we need to get accomplished? What have we done with our life? I mean, I, I, got, I, I set up, you know, sometimes I like to kill Jamie. Anybody else feel like that? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Sometimes I like to kill him. He comes up to me the other day. He says, what are you going to be preaching on on the radio? I said, that's your job. I preached that you put it on the radio. Yeah, but you write them books, and you know what you mail out, and I got to know what you're going to. I said, okay, okay, just let me think about it. Let me think about it. I'll call you tomorrow. So I had to sit up all night last night and, and write a book just to keep him busy. Now, that's a shame. I had to write a book to keep him busy. So we'd know, have the book ready to send out to the radio listeners so they can follow along in the book while I'm preaching on the radio. So I had to do double duty to keep him busy last night. And I'm telling you, by about 1.30, lines started running together. Y'all ever had that happen? Lines started running together. My feet started getting numb. My head started hurting, but I stuck with it till I got it done. And I got in bed and got up this morning and called Jamie and said, all right, here's it. The book's done. Here's what we're going to do. Well, now we've got to do the exit. He's always wanting me to work. He don't ever do nothing. I have to do it all. It just wears me to death. It just keeps me busy all the time. So I said, all right, we'll do that tonight before church. And I'm, I'm sitting there, Lord, have mercy. It just never ends. It's always something to do. Always something to get done. Always. And then I went to the, went and checked my email. Y'all know y'all check email. Some of y'all forget. But y'all check your text and your emails. It'll help you. And all of a sudden, there was something from Ken Lipperman. And I know when it's from Ken what it is by looking at it. And it was from uh, any time somebody goes on the website and leaves their name and address because they've been listening to the radio, they go to the contact page, and it sends it to him, and he turns around and sends it to me. And I thought, you know, I was tired last night. I was aggravated with some people last night. I just felt like I had everything I had to do, was this, that, and that. Mm -hmm. And then God said, to see, somebody's listening to all that. Somebody's learning from what you're doing. 
Shut up, quit laughing and mirror. That's where he's saying Jamie. That's where he's saying Jamie, <laughs> where he's saying Jamie over there. <laughs> but do you understand? Hey, it made me feel good that what I'm doing is something's happening with it. It isn't just sitting there. I got to thinking about it the other day. I, I started looking at how God's blessed my radio ministry. The same slot I'm preaching on every night. And by the way, if you'd like to listen, if you want to hear it more than once, uh, you can go to WTBI every night at 9.30. You can listen to it right on the, on the website. You can listen to the radio broadcast every night. But I'm on the same spot, a spot, Noah Fry, Noah Fry. Noah Fry was on for 20 years. So he got off when he, he went on, somebody took it, and then somebody that, and he offered a spot to me. So I asked Brother Noah one time, I said, Brother Noah, I said, tell me how good WTBI was to, the, uh, to your radio audience. He said, I hardly ever got a letter. Real encouraging to me, I'm telling you, real encouraging to me. But I'm telling you one thing, God's been good to me. So I told him, I got to rub it in on him before he died. I said, Brother Noah, I said, thank you for priming that for 30 years so I'd have, the, I'd have the good end of it. He just died laughing. He just died laughing. It's a different day now than what it was back then. But I want to tell you something, folks. It's good to know that what you're doing is being visited by God. God's taking your little efforts and making much out of it when he visits. He said, I want to build. I want to plant. You know, I think about every time I go to the post office. I can't help but think of Jesse Mills. Because Jesse, he used to come in the office every day. And he, I, I knew what he was doing. He'd open that back door and he'd look. I kept all the envelopes on the back shelf behind the door. And he'd be looking to see if he needed to order some more envelopes. I never had to tell him to order envelopes, did I, Mike? Never had to tell him to order envelopes. That thing stayed, it stayed full from top to bottom all the time. One day I just pick it in him. I said, would you stop looking behind that door? He looked at me around the corner because I never talked to him like that. He, <laughs> did I do something wrong? I said, no. I said, you just about to kill me working me to death. <laughs> but you know what? He was a big part of me learning how to use mail to, to communicate with people, communicate with folks. And every time I go to the post office, I think he's in heaven. But he's still driving me crazy. <laughs> he's still working me to death. And he he been dead how long, Mike? Oh seven. 07. He's still working the preacher to death in 2023. Lord, I don't believe it's been that long. Lord, help us. But anyway, his work's still going on. He ain't here. Amen? Noah Fry helped me. Jesse Mills helped me. Hey, who's helped you? Who's helped you along? Don't let them down, amen? Don't let God down. Why? Because he wants to plan. God knows our faith. He knows our obedience. He's aware of our efforts. He has guaranteed us that he will reward our faithfulness. If we're dedicated, if we're dutiful, if, and determined to fulfill his will for our lives, he'll bless you to get it done. So let's get it done. Say amen. I don't talk about money much. But I was, at the end of the year, you do budgets and you do all that kind of stuff and you watch everything's happening. And I, I keep all our records in one book. That's what I spent all day today uh, here at the church and at home putting them new books together because we've got to start all over. New year. So I took that book and I looked at the balance at the end of the year on the last report of the month and I turned it back and looked to the first and I said, look at that. We got more money at the end of the year than we had the first of the year, and Steve Rains done spent a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> done spent a hundred thousand dollars, and we still got the more money than we had when we started. You know why? Because if you work, God blesses what you're doing. We still got more to do. Say Amen, Steve. Still got more to do, and if we'll work faithfully, we'll be fruitful, because He visits us. When he comes, is he going to waste his time correcting us, or is he going to say, man, they're on the ball ready to roll. I ain't got to correct them on the thing. I'm just going to take them and move the ball forward. Keep the ball going. Keep it moving. Number four, verse, last part of verse nine. Waterest. And waterest it, then look down to verse 10a, 
Thou waterest the ridges thereof. What's that word? Abundantly. Waterest in the Hebrew is the word shook. To run after or to run over. To overflow with water. Water is the what in the Bible? Somebody tell me. Word of God. When you see water in the Bible, it's a word that means and is a metaphor for the word Bible, the word of God. And so it's a symbol of the scriptures and their ability to give us life and vibrancy to, to live for the Lord abundantly in his grace. Brother Sean's got to preach a funeral in a few days. You know how I know? Because he dialed my phone number. Preacher, can, can you help me? Yes, Sean, I help you. I help you. There it is. There's the help. I spent part of the afternoon this afternoon. I pulled out some of my old funeral messages and got names out of them. It's got fixed up for him so he'd have something to look at, something to use if he wanted to. And uh, so I'm sitting there and I found a message out for funeral I preached on the word grace. Do you understand you can't have grace without water? You can't have grace without the Word of God because grace comes from the Word of God. Say amen. amen. Grace comes from the Word of God. And so if we want his abundant grace, we got to throw the water. Now you let her blood sugar go high. You know what's the first thing she's going to do? She's going to grab that cup, got one big as a 50-gallon barrel with a top and a straw on it. And she feels that thing all the way, goes to the refrigerator, and hear it all the way in the office. I say, uh-oh, she's getting water, blood sugar's up. And she'll start drinking that water. And she'll drink that water. And you know what'll happen to her blood sugar? It'll start going down. It'll start going down. That water does for her what it needs to get her blood sugar in line so she won't be super out of it or super... And leave it at that. Okay? So that water brings her in check. Say amen. Just brings her right down. Listen, if something starts flying in the other room, I go high. And I know her blood sugar's done going high. She starts fussing at the vacuum cleaner. I'm thinking, that vacuum cleaner ain't going to answer you, but I said, I'd rather her fuss at that vacuum cleaner and talk to me. Come on now, amen or me. But she gets that water and she'll start walking that treadmill and drinking water. And next thing you know, her blood sugar just go right on down like it's supposed to. Some of us are in big trouble spiritually because we're not getting enough water. We're not getting enough water of the Word. The Holy Spirit either thrives on the presence of water in our life or He starves and withers at the lack of water of the Word in our life. If you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life and do something for you, You've got to give him the word. So if you're not reading your Bible every day, if you're not bashing yourself, not just once a day, morning, noon, and night, all day long with the word of God, keep it in your heart and mind, the Holy Spirit withers up and blows away in our life. He's, he's useless to us because we've got to keep him hydrated with the word of God. The more scriptures we absorb, the greater potential of us being miraculously used by God. Listen to me. The more you read your Bible, the more you put the Word of God in your life, the more miracles God can work for you. If Seriously, I'm being serious with you now. If you feel like you're not having enough miracles in your life, start drinking some water. Start reading your Bible. Put some of the Word in you. It'll build your faith, and your faith is in who? God. God's heard the Holy Spirit. You want, to, you want to make him pop pie in your life? Feed him some water. Feed him some water, and he'll give you strength. What is strength? Grace. If you want the grace of God, the miracles of God in your life, you've got to have water. The less time we spend in the Word of God in our lives, we dry up, we shrivel up until we're spiritually dead and useless before God in the world that we live in. Psalm 63, 1. Oh God, thou art my God. Aren't you glad he's on our side? Aren't you glad the water's available? 
Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. There is no water. You've got to go to your job. I understand that, but you're not going to find water on your job. You're not going to find water in your neighborhood. Sometimes you're not even going to find water in your family. Hey, water's not coming from there. You need the water because of all that. Say amen. I mean, you'd be sitting at home minding your own business and the world's falling apart. You'd be serving God, doing what you're supposed to be doing. I called Jason the other day when they got back from the trip. I said, Jason, it's January. I need paper. I'm down to six reams of paper. And Linda's done use four of them. I'm down to two. Paper, Jason, order it quick. So he orders it, sends me the receipt, got four cases of paper on the way, supposed to be delivered this afternoon. Well, we got home from taking her to the doctor, and we put her in the driveway, no paper. I said, well, let me be in a little while. And all of a sudden, I heard Wendy going off. And I heard Charm's feet. I said, Wendy didn't go over and get Charm. We didn't go get her. And Wendy's all to pieces. She's out of breath. And the dog is disturbed. I said, what is going on? She said, that man just delivered that paper. Charm was over in her house, 9805. We live in 9801. She's in 05. And that man got out and started carrying that paper up on our deck. She went berserk in that trailer. She knocked the back door open. And she saw him. And she didn't wave and say, how you doing? Oh, no. Like a bullet. Whew. He just did get in that van before she got there. And she chased him clean up the driveway going to 58. She's having a duck fit. I'm in my office. I don't even know nothing's going on. <laughs> but the whole world's melting down outside. And if she's upset and Charm's upset, I'm going to be upset. I picked this phone up right here and I called him. I said, I'll tell you one thing, boy, you got a problem. <laughs> I said, your dog just knocked down your back door and got loose and run to 58. And he's laughing. I said, I'll tell you one thing, you laugh now and cry later. Because I promise you, buddy, if somebody sees you for getting bit by that dog, they ain't suing 9801. They sued 9805. He didn't laugh no more. <laughs> Come on now. Look, look, you'd be minding your own business and in three seconds the whole world can fall apart. There ain't no water in this world. But you know what? Then you can get along with God and let his water soothe you. Say amen. You ever had a long day and get in the shower and turn that hot water on? Woo Especially if it's cold outside. You don't want that stuff cut off. Say amen. You stay there all day long. That water refreshes you. The word of God refreshes. Look, Isaiah 44, 3. For I will pour water upon him that is what? I love y'all, but I'm thirsty. My mouth's dry. He said, and floods upon the dry ground. Boy, isn't this world dry? Isn't it dry in your life? It's dry in mine. It's dry everywhere, spiritually speaking. I will pour my, what's that word? Upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water. What's that word? Courses. All over the world, there are courses called ditches. Ditches that run into what? Creeks, creeks that run into streams, streams that run into rivers, and rivers that run into oceans, that the sun warms up that ocean and creates what? Clouds, and them clouds move back over the land and pour more water into those ditches, into those streams, into those creeks, into those rivers, and it just keeps what? Just keeps going. That's the courses this verse is talking about, the weather pattern. 
the water just the world's watered by that water pattern. And God has courses and paths in our life for the word of God to flow through, to bring the water of the word to a lost and dying world. What I'm trying to tell you is you may not care about the loss because you may be in a drought. Now you can't help if you're in a physical drought, can we? If it don't rain, we can't make it rain. I don't care how much Indian blood you got in you. You can't make it rain. But I'm telling you, there's no excuse for us spiritually because we can make it rain all the time. Say so, amen. All you got to do is read the Word of God. And those courses flow to bring the water, the water of the Word to the lost and dying world and the suffering church that is desperate for encouragement and empowerment from the Word of God. I texted a lady this week who had COVID. And I just texted her a few words and said I was praying for her. She texted me 15 back. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you. I'm so much better. Thank you for, for caring. Thank the church for praying for me. There's a world out there thirsting to death for encouragement. If we keep the water of the word running in our life, the weather will keep going. Our lives will keep growing. Other people will start being blessed. We must pour the word into our hearts and souls so they can flow through us all, and all those around us. We've got to be the, the irrigation to the rest of this world. If we do not engulf ourselves in the word of God, we'll have a life dried up like a dried up brook. Streams and rivers that will not flow with water of the truth of the word of God that uh, has, parched, has parched this world with the dry lies and the heat and scorching of the lies of the devil. You ever heard such a day? Let me tell you something. I, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. You don't know what's going on in Washington, D.C. today why they got to have six boats because it's dry up there. They don't have any discipline. They don't have any dignity. They don't have any leadership of the Holy Spirit of God in that place. God's not welcome in our capital anymore. You understand that? It's not. It's not. He's not accepted in our world anymore. But you know what? Just as much control as, as we have over the weather, they ain't got no more control over us than we do the weather. But it's our choice to continue to keep the water flowing, keep the water moving, so souls can be saved, Christians can be encouraged. Tonight, God visited us and when the Holy Spirit visits us and waters us, that water ought to be gushing out of us like wells of living water for a dry and thirsty world. Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached your words best I know how tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you do visit us. And thank you, Lord, that you do water us. We thank you for the water of the word. Maybe tonight God's people just need to come to the altar and ask for the power to read the Bible more, to study the Bible more, to share the Bible more, to be a better water fountain for the lost and dying world we're living in. Lord, if there's somebody that needs to be saved, may they be saved tonight. But Lord, help God's people leave you encouraged that we can make a big difference in this world we're living in. And the devil can't stop us. Washington can't stop us. Richmond can't stop us. City Hall of Danville can't stop us. If the water's flowing, it's going to run through those ditches of this world and the rivers of this world to the people that need it. But Lord, if we don't water ourselves, the creeks don't start, the streams don't start and turn into rivers. They never get to rivers and oceans unless we water ourselves first. Well, we know the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved by the God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, help us understand how important it is for us to have you visit and touch our lives with your anointing. And if we're watered when you come, the water flows from streams to rivers to oceans and it blesses the whole world we love you tonight thank you for loving us bless this invitation I pray in Jesus name heads are bad eyes are closed God spoke to you please I beg you come speak to him right now the altars are open just come